Hi, welcome. It's Meredith. I'm here with our daily message for Tuesday, the 29th of December, 2020. We're using eight coins, tattoo tarot for our message today. And our cards from the bottom of the deck, our theme and the atmosphere. <laughs> we start out with the death card. Ooh, powerful. Endings, simultaneous endings and beginnings. You know it. I like this. It feels like a full circle uh, type of energy as I look at the card. I, I actually feel satisfaction and fulfillment on this card as well. Not that I don't typically feel that when I see the death card. I just... Hmm, I feel a lightness of being in the energy and... You know, we're welcoming the expansion within the atmosphere at this time. We're not feeling confined or restricted within the self. That's what I sense off the death card. What comes with it? Eight of Wands. Repeat from yesterday with the Wheel of Fortune. Hmm. The Divine Delivery System next to the Eight of Wands, which for me is one of those intuitive download, because it's a communication card. You know, we're receiving some sort of intuitive download that's coming out of a transforming or transitioning type of energy off the death card. So as soon as we're perceiving, hearing, sensing, feeling, knowing uh, off that Eight of Wands, Something that is refreshing, clearing away. The, the Wheel of Fortune turns for us as well and delivers something new, fresh, and exciting on the foundation as well. So Eight of Wands right in the middle of the Death card and the Wheel of Fortune. I feel from my guides, hear from my guides, fortuitous events unfolding. Listen to your intuition. Follow the inner voice. I know we hear this message so much uh, recently. You know, for a couple of months, that, that message has been coming hard out of the tarot cards. And I feel as if this is a, a pinnacle moment with that, with that message. Something becomes quite obvious to us within our intuition. It feels like it's flowing in by divine order, divine design, and it puts an end to something while simultaneously opening up a door of happiness, fulfillment, satisfaction for us. That's what I've got over the, out of those first three cards. And then next we have the hanged man, yes. Pause in the action for enlightenment. And that enlightenment is truly our intuitive gift. The messages that we are channeling, the communication that is incoming. That Eight of Wands feels really powerful in the reading because there's so much connected to it. In ancient tarot, it's a marriage card, so it brings a message of unity. We had the Eight of Wands yesterday as well, and it was a bullseye shaped like a heart with the Eight Wands all striking the heart, right? So we're getting to the heart of a matter, and it feels like the heart of a matter within satisfaction and fulfillment being delivered, cosmically so, off the Wheel of Fortune. And as we pause for enlightenment, as we don't rush headlong into one thing or another, we take the breath, we take the moment, and we... We are a witness to what is unfolding. Without judgment, we stand in an energy of hmm, a deeper knowing of self-love, which allows us to receive information clearly in an intuitive way. So we take the next step, whatever that next step is, it's being delivered by the universe. We're doing it in a loving fashion. And then we have <laughs> well, let's just talk about intuition because there's the Queen of Cups right there. So she is 
She is the epitome of intuition, channeled information. She's emotionally awake, aware, alert, and intimate. And why wouldn't we pause in that kind of energy and that kind of flow to really feel what's, what is blossoming in the energy atmosphere for us? I feel a, a, a strong sense of celebration off that death card. There's something moving off our super stable foundation and we are in deep appreciation to see it move off the foundation. It's not a loss. It's, it's a total gain for us because the cyclical motion of these cards up here, you have the Wheel of Fortune dropping something on the foundation with the death card. Eight of Wands in the middle. I mean, that's fire, it's passion, it's creativity, it's movement, momentum, motivation, enthusiasm, right? In the Eight of Wands. Fantastic. Well, let's see what this all connects to. <laughs> so we now have the Queen of Cups doubling our intuitive information message here. Next to the Nine of Swords which we saw in yesterday's reading, I think with the Five of Swords and an Emperor-like energy around that. What I'm feeling here is a successful intuitive navigation through an energy that the Nine of Swords was contributing to, hmm. or we were contributing to in an energy investment toward something that needed to go, which is truly being swept off the foundation for us in that eight of wands with the death card and the wheel of fortune. I feel like the placement of this nine of swords represents success to us. We saw it, we dealt with it. We saw it intuitively, we felt it intuitively. It kept us awake. It became uh, an energetic pebble in the shoe. And here it is again, and I feel it shows up in wholeness and completion and fulfillment. This is what's going. This is what we're grateful to see come off the foundation from that death card. And then look at that. <laughs> well, there's an intuitive sandwich if ever there was one with the high priestess. Oh my gosh, on the other side is the queen of cups. And let's also comment that we have the high priestess and the death card in the reading again. Oh my goodness, these two. You gotta love them. You know, they're persistent. They've been showing up for over a year now at random. And you know that when we see them together, the death card truly is sweeping something off the foundation and the high priestess has allowed us to see it. She has guided us to whatever has to go, Nine of Swords. And it's, you know, it's almost as if the hanged man represents our own enlightened halo, right? That's where the Eight of Wands sits within the halo of our soul star chakra, of our intuitive presence, shining the light on the Nine of Swords with the Queen of Cups and the High Priestess so that we can move it along, move whatever it is along. Wow, that's fantastic. Share in the comments what your Nine of Swords is. You know, that's always exciting to read, if it's in your heart to do so, of course. But we all love to read those comments. We love to see how, how other people are navigating these situations that we see show up in the tarot. So what is it for you? What's coming off your foundation in such an enlightened way? And what is simultaneously being dropped on your foundation in, from the Wheel of Fortune? How did your guidance lead you there? What were the serendipities and synchronicities? Share that if it's in your heart to do so because it's really amazing and it brings encouragement and inspiration to all of us who read those messages. All right. Yeah, nice. Now we have the Knight of Swords. So what does this mean for us? We, we graduate from the Nine to the Knight in the Suit of Swords. So I think we had the Chariot yesterday as well. It's dynamic movement. And I love that the Knight of Swords is sitting right there with the High Priestess because, you know, this Knight has almost no peripheral vision whatsoever. He's a hard charger. He's all about his mission and where he's going. And there's a whole lot that goes on in the periphery that he'll never know anything about because he's, you know, charging, right? Uh, 
Thing is, though, sitting next to the high priestess, and this has happened time and again in our messages, the high priestess is there, and she's the one who lights, hanged man, the periphery. So we see it all. We don't miss a thing. And it's there that we noticed whatever the nine of swords was for us and allowed the death card to sweep it off the foundation with great appreciation because it made way for what's, what's in unity for us on that eight on the foundation. It's, it's creating a depth of connection within self, a unified connection within self, and then in every other connection we have. So it's, it's an upgrade to all of our relationships. How beautiful. And then <laughs> the hermit. Yeah. Okay. Core meeting on the hermit is that a quest beckons. And certainly we're charging into our quest here on the Knight of Swords. But what's fascinating to me is it's a pause in the action hanged man for enlightenment. And we always see a light around the head of the hanged man. And then here's the hermit with his lantern of what? enlightenment <laughs> so we wisely paused so we could gather our intuitive wisdom and we could leverage that energy on whatever our personal nine of swords situation is we did it we did it well we moved the energy along thank you death card we made way for the universal communication eight of wands and in so doing, made way for what the divine is delivering to us, Wheel of Fortune. Mm. This is why the cards have been uh, so consistent and persistent with listening to our intuitive voice. Because it's led us to this. All of this enlightenment and happiness. <laughs> okay. Angel answers. If you have a question, now's a great time. Let the cards answer it for you or be a confirmation to something else for you. This one has been showing up quite a bit, improving health. And I like that because our whole well-being improves when we remove a nine of swords energy from our foundation. This is a card of anxiety and sleepless nights and worry and vulture thoughts and an overactive ego. So when we can quell that kind of energy, everything improves. Ooh. Next, we have <laughs> forgiveness. Very sweet. I feel that that is connected to letting go of this nine here, which again creates uh, greater well-being. And then we have no. <laughs> It's the soft, sweet, simple no. It's not the emphatic one. And I feel that it's whispered from the High Priestess to the Nine of Swords. Whatever that is for you, you're just simply saying no. No more. No thank you. I have space on my foundation for greater things. One more. <laughs> this isn't a problem for us. Be assertive emphatically. Yes. Take the leap. Make the phone call, start the conversation, share, be assertive, put your heart right out there. I love that. All right, let's see about our affirmation from the universe has your back. Oh, that was yesterday's card. <laughs> I do whatever it takes to get closer to consciousness, <laughs> which means listening to our intuition, hello. The cards again, hammering that message home for us. Sweet. Have a beautiful Tuesday, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in, watching, and hitting the thumbs up. Deeply appreciated. Peace, love, joy, and happiness to each of you. Namaste.